Here we're going to look at a problem from the 2014 India National Math Olympiad. So this is question two. This is a question both involving the floor function, which I love, and one that was suggested by some viewers, which I'm also excited to get as well. Okay, let's look at the problem. So we want to let n be a natural number and then show that this sum of floor values related to n is even. So let's see what this sum is. We've got the floor of n over 1 plus the floor of n over 2 plus all the way up to the floor of n over n plus the floor of the square root of n. So this object we need to show is even for all natural numbers n. Okay, so I've got some hints worked out for you guys if you want to try this first. So maybe this first hint is pretty obvious because we have something that depends on natural numbers here, and that is to use induction. So there are slick ways to do this without induction. There's actually a nice geometric solution as well, but sort of my style is just to hit it with the most straightforward method, and I think induction is definitely the most straightforward method here. And then another hint, which this hint is actually true for lots of contest math problems, and that is there is a big clue for what you need to look at built into the structure of the problem. So maybe I won't tell you what that clue is, but we'll point it out when we look at the solution. So maybe give this problem a go with these hints, we'll come back with a full solution. Okay, now we're ready for our solution. So like I said, we're gonna do a proof by induction, and proofs by induction always start with the base case. So let's maybe do the base case, which in this case will be n equals one or n equals zero if you wanna take zero to be a natural number. But I will say here that the problem says natural numbers, not positive integers. I haven't shortened it because I'm lazy in this case. Notice the n equals zero case actually doesn't work though because we get a zero in the denominator here. So what do you take for this value? Maybe it's like an empty sum or something which would be equal to zero, which is even anyway. Well, so anyway, let's look at the n equals one case. So that's gonna give us the floor of one over one plus the floor of the square root of one, but that's simply just one plus one, which is two. So two is clearly even, so we're good to go there. So now let's go ahead and make our induction hypothesis. And if you were working on this problem, you would perhaps want to explore some of the other small values of n to get an idea for what's going on first. But we're going to jump right into the induction hypothesis. So for our induction hypothesis, we will suppose for some k bigger than or equal to 1, we know that the floor of k over 1 plus the floor of k over 2 plus all the way up to the floor of k over k plus the floor of the square root of k is even. So we're supposing this statement is true for some kth case. And then next we want to look at the induction step, which is to consider the k plus first case. So that's exactly what we'll do. So let's consider the k plus first case. So what does that look like? So that'll look like the floor of k plus 1 over 1 plus the floor of k plus 1 over 2 all the way up to the floor of k plus 1 over k plus the floor of k plus 1 over k plus 1 and then plus the floor of the square root of k plus 1. And now that really brings us to a very important question here. And that question goes like this. How can we relate the floor of k plus 1 over, let's maybe call it m, and the floor of k over m? Question. Good. So if we can answer this question, then maybe we're like pretty good to go. Um, assuming that we use that big clue that's built into the writing of the problem. So let's maybe look at this. So the only way we can get the floor of k plus 1 over m to be bigger than the floor of k over m is for m to be a divisor of k plus 1. So if m is a divisor of k plus 1, then we have a whole number within this floor, so we don't have to go down at all. So let's maybe write that out as a piecewise equation. So we have the floor of k plus 1 over m is equal to, so like I said, a piecewise equation. So this is going to be equal to the floor of k over m if 
m does not divide k plus 1. So notice if m does not divide k plus 1, then these are going to give you the same like whole number part. And then we'll have the floor of k over m plus 1 if m does divide k plus 1, like that. And I might as well point out here that this piecewise definition of the floor of k plus 1 over n uh, depends on the fact that the GCD of k and k plus 1 is 1. That is the greatest common divisor of two sequential numbers is equal to 1. Okay, so let's maybe like pick back up at this spot with this observation. Maybe we'll put an A here for the answer to this question, and then we'll move towards the end. So let's see where we are. So on the last board, we made this induction hypothesis that the floor of K over one plus all the way up to the floor of K over K plus the floor of the square root of K was even. That was for some K bigger than or equal to one. Then we made the following observation about the floor of k plus 1 over m. So that's the floor of k over m if m does not divide k plus 1. And it's the floor of k over m plus 1 if m does divide k plus 1. Now we want to consider this k plus first case. So we've got this floor of k plus 1 over 1 plus all the way up to the floor of k plus 1 over k plus 1 plus the floor of the square root of k plus 1. And at this point, we should be thinking about the floor of the square root of k plus 1 versus the floor of the square root of k. And that's actually really easy to see what this is. So let's maybe go ahead and put that as a piecewise thing right here. So we've got this floor of the square root of k plus 1. So that's going to be equal to the floor of the square root of k if k plus 1 is not equal to a perfect square. So I'll just write that as k plus 1 is not equal to a squared, where a is some natural number. So in other words, a perfect square. But it's going to be equal to the floor of the square root of k plus 1 with the plus 1 outside if k plus 1 is a perfect square. So we'll write that as k plus 1 equals a squared. Okay, so that's kind of in the same vein of this observation up here, but maybe like a little more intuitive. Okay, and that's actually the big hint that's built in to the writing of this solution is you want to look at the case when k plus 1 is a perfect square versus the case when k plus 1 is not a perfect square. So that's exactly what we'll do right now. So let's maybe, like I said, break that into cases. So case number 1 is k plus 1 is a perfect square. So we might as well do that one first. But Looking at k plus 1 being a perfect square, that tells us something about this thing that I have up here in pink. But that also tells me about the number of divisors of k plus 1. So let's see. Notice that is if and only if the floor of the square root of k plus 1 equals the floor of the square root of k plus 1. Again, by that pink observation. But then... By this observation up here, we have, this is if and only if, k plus 1 has an odd number of divisors. So that's a well-known classification of perfect squares versus non-perfect squares. So perfect squares have an odd number of divisors. And non-perfect squares, all of their divisors come in divisor pairs or factor pairs. Okay, so let's see what we can do with this. So this thing right here combined with our observation, so maybe I'll put a little green arrow to say we're combining that with our observation, will give us the following setup. So we have k plus 1 over m in the floor function. So that's going to be equal to k over m in the floor, and then it's going to be equal to k over m plus 1 in the floor. And I want to point out that this is an odd number of times. 
Again, because this occurs for all of the divisors of k plus one. So maybe which odd number should we use? Well, we've used m and a, so maybe we'll use b. So let's say this is 2b plus one times here. Okay, so now we have all we need. So let's see what we can do with that. So let's maybe take this object right here. I'll call this purple star and I'll bring the purple star down. And notice that I can replace all of this stuff which I have red underlined with the following sum. So this is gonna be k over one in the floor plus k over two in the floor all the way up to k over k in the floor. And then finally, it's going to be plus 2b plus one. So let's maybe underline that in red so we see where that's coming from. So why is that 2b plus one? Well, it's from all of these ones here that are occurring 2b plus one times. And then next we have this bit right here. So the floor of the square root of k plus one. And we know that's gonna break down into the floor of the square root of k plus one with the plus one outside, like that. And that's again because k plus one is a perfect square. So now let's see what we can do with that. So notice that all of these terms from here to here and this term right here come from our induction hypothesis. Let's maybe give a name to that sum up here. So this is even, let's say it's equal to two times capital N. So that means all of these pink things add up to two times capital N. And then we have left over two B plus two, because we've got one plus one. Now that's clearly an even number, but we can just go ahead and factor a two out of it to be really thorough. And we've got two times N plus B plus one, which is even. So we've taken care of case one. Now let's move on to the second case. Okay, now we're ready to look at this last case, which is when k plus one is not a perfect square. So let's go ahead and notice that there are some equivalent formulations of that. So that's if and only if the floor of the square root of k plus one is equal to the floor of the square root of k, as we had in our pink observation up there. But then that's also equivalent to saying that k plus one has an even, number of divisors. But now we can take this observation, which is in green up here, and use that to decompose this floor of k plus one over m as follows. So now we have the floor of k plus one over m. So again, that's gonna have this piecewise definition. That's gonna be equal to the floor of k over m if m is not a divisor of k plus one, but then it's gonna be the floor of k over m plus one if m is a divisor. But again, we have an even number of divisors because we're supposing that this is not a perfect square. So this occurs an even number of times. Maybe let's call that two times b times. And now we're actually ready to finish it off. So this case is a little bit easier. So let's take this blue star, just or purple star, just like we did, and rewrite it in the following way. So this is gonna be equal to the floor of k over one, all the way up to the floor of k over k, plus two times b. So let's see where that came from. So that came from this bit right here, using the observation that I have over here in my piecewise definition. And then next, we have this is added to the floor of the square root of k, and that comes from this floor of the square root of k plus one, using that pink observation, which is above. But now, we can add together all of the parts from the induction hypothesis. So notice, all of these parts when I'm putting uh, with a yellow arrow over come from the induction hypothesis. So those all add up to 2n. So this all adds up to 2n plus 2 times b, which is 2 times n plus b, which is clearly an even number. So we've shown both cases lead us to an even value for the required sum. And that's a good place to stop.